All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Zach Perry. I'm a lawyer. I'm the owner of the Fortune Law Firm. We're out of Las Vegas. And I'm Nick with Fortune DNA. Nice to meet you all. You guys kind of configured, spread out. I wonder how people pick their seats always when they come to an event. So. <laughs> as long as you're not sitting next to someone else, right? Right. All right, be, let's, before we start, let's play a little game. We got, we got a, a prize here for the person who traveled the farthest. So we got some Las Vegas chocolate, ethyl M chocolates. We got a chocolate factory in Las Vegas. A lot of people don't know that. So we, we brought this from Las Vegas, and we want to give it to the person who traveled the farthest. So has anyone come from west of the Mississippi? Raise your hand. Uh-oh. I come down to Uber. OK, I'm going to keep it then. I traveled the farthest. <laughs> uh, where'd you come? You came from Florida. Anyone come from farther than Florida? Florida's all right. You're the winner. Anton is the winner. Yeah. <clears throat> we brought Las Vegas chocolate to Pennsylvania, so go figure. Most people don't know that uh, Hershey's makes a lot of their chocolate in Las Vegas, so yes, <laughs> it'll surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to have a little bit of fun here. We dress like this for a reason. We're going to kind of play off of each other. We're going to uh, present opposing views. And in the process, hopefully, you'll have some fun and you'll learn a boatload about saving taxes. So we're going to get started. How many of you remember in 2012 when Warren Buffett said, hey, I made a billion dollars this year and I paid less in taxes than my secretary? Do you guys remember when he said that? And if you're like me, you probably went to your CPA and you said, hey, CPA, how do I do that? I want to save money. I want to pay less than my secretary. And your CPA said, you can't do that. And then you went to your financial planner. And you said, hey, financial planner, I need to know, how is, how is Warren Buffett doing this? I want to do this. And your financial planner said, you can't do that. But what they really meant when they said you can't do that is, I can't do that. But we're here to tell you that they were dead wrong. There is a way that you can use the same techniques, the strategies that Warren Buffett used. They're no longer just available to the super wealthy. We're going to show you how to do it. It's affordable, it's something that anyone can do. So, one of the things that we want to bring home today is there is a smart way to invest and there's a dumb way to invest. And I mean that lightly, it's just there's a way that the wealthy people invest where they get to keep the lion's share of their money. I know you guys have heard stories where these corporations and companies and people on TV and in the newspapers, they make millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars and pay hardly any money in taxes. The biggest thing that you have to understand is it's not because they are wealthy that they're able to do so. It's not what you invest in, it's how you invest. And what we're going to talk about today is the vehicle to invest through. That's what we're gonna go over. So there's a lot of people at the trade show today who's, who, are, who are explaining where you can put your money, who can say, hey, you can invest in us or invest in the products we're selling. Could they invest in any of those products? Absolutely. Anything that you can think of, and probably some of the ones that you can't, you can invest using this vehicle, okay? So my question to you, this is, oh, I always get the wrong answer on this. Maybe you guys will come up with the right answer, but the major institutions out there, what do you think is the number one investment? So you have tier one, tier two, tier three investing, right? Tier one is their coveted number one priority top level investments for your financial institutions, especially your banks. What do you think they're invested in? Can I take a stab at it? Sure. Real estate. How many people think real estate? Number one asset, real estate. Real estate? What, what, what else do you think if it's not real estate? Any ideas? Go ahead. What's that? Treasuries. Treasuries, okay. You'd be surprised to know that the number one tier one investment for 76% of all the major banks, not just in this country, but in the world, is in something called BOLI, Bank Owned Life Insurance. Bank Owned Life Insurance, okay? And... So you walk into a bank, right? Pretty much everyone's a vice president. Right, why do you think when you walk into a bank, Virtually everybody you talk to is a vice president. Have you noticed that? You got this 19-year-old kid and they're a vice president of this. Do you know why that is? That's because that's the lowest 
uh, position that you can be where somebody can key man insure you. And so you'll have some kid that's 19 years old and one of these major associations will go ahead and insure them and they might leave that bank or they might leave that financial institution and 60, 70 years down the road, they pass away and they end up with this, this death benefit, okay? So I want to just make it very clear, I hate life insurance. We have roughly about 45,000 investors as clients. There isn't one of them that likes life insurance. In fact, I don't even think they should call it life insurance. They should call it death insurance because the only people that really make money on 98% of the way these programs are set up is if you pass away, it goes on to your spouse or your kids or your loved ones or your beneficiaries or your estate. But I do love it for what it's used for, is used as a tool, used to wrap cash, used to wrap mergers and acquisitions. It's the reason why Warren Buffett decided to buy AIG instead of just keep using them because he could underwrite his deals. You will see if you go back to the newspaper articles around the time that these things took place, it will say, and he wrapped this, and they wrapped this merger, right? Some of you guys are nodding your head because you remember that. That's what they're talking about, and we're gonna show you how everybody in here can do that the same way, okay? So it's not the investment, investments we don't care about, okay? It's the vehicle you use to invest through. So I have a question for the group. Now don't be shy. But raise your hand if you want to pay more money in taxes. You feel like you're not doing your civic duty. You're not, you want to pay more taxes. All right, there's always one guy in the room who wants to pay more taxes. All right. The rest... <laughs> oh, I see. We're going to show you how you can make more money and pay less taxes. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Now, I'm a small business owner, right? And taxes kill. The government taxes you when you earn money. They tax you when you save your money. They tax you when you invest your money. They tax you when you retire. Heck, after I die, they're going to tax me. Taxes kill small businesses. This is the thing that we need to eliminate. We need to be able to create a program or a vehicle to eliminate those taxes. And hey, I've got just a statement to rem for you guys to remember about why would you ever invest in anything taxed if you could invest in those same things 100% tax-free. The same amount of money, the same amount of time, the same return, the same risk. It's just, you're going to keep it all. Here's Why the, would you not want to do that? Remember, it's not about the investment, it's the vehicle. Here's the problem, Nick. I went to my CPA. I said, hey, I want to, I want to be able to do this. I want to pay less in taxes. My CPA said, no, if you're super rich, that's something you can do. But otherwise, it's not. So is that smart or is that dumb, Nick? That's dumb, because I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest problem that we're going to face, and we're going to talk about this here in a little bit, are the people that should be giving you the advice, the people that should have the answers. We're going to change your paradigm on how your thinking is about who you're actually taking advice from. So before we get started, one, a couple things that we wanted to bring up to you. Number one, why do you think that we're here? We're not here to sell why you anything, we here? so you're going to be refreshed. In fact, if you're expecting to be sold anything, you're going to be disappointed. This is for education purposes, okay? So the question becomes, why do you think that we're here? Why are we here? Why did we come 3,000 miles to come out here to go talk to all you fine people? Why do you think we're here? To have a Philly cheesesteak. We, we accomplished that. And a pretzel. I saw the Liberty Bell. It was fantastic. Why else do you think we're here? It's the most basic idea. Why do you think we're here? To enlighten you? I'd love to enlighten you, but enlighten you doesn't pay my bills, does it? We're here to do business with you. And here's what you got to understand is that you have to have a paradigm shift about who you're working with and who you're deciding to take information with. So, so can I come... Excuse me, information from. So can I come here, take some notes, and then go talk to my, my advisors and have them put together the plan? Unfortunately for you that are sitting out here, you've got to understand by the time we get done, you will realize your CPA alone cannot do this for you. Your financial planner that you have, I don't care if it's a relative, cannot do this for you. Your lawyer will not be able to do this for you, and your insurance agent, or if you are one, will not be able to do it for you. In order to do this program, you have to be all of those things. And because of the way this program is set up, 
And because it extremely benefits the individual and doesn't pay these massive commissions like all these other programs out, the person that you would want to go ahead and do this for you doesn't want to offer it for you because it doesn't pay like that. We are not in that game. We are not in that financial side or that insurance side. We are a firm that does asset protection, estate planning, entity formation, tax strategies, and wealth preservation. It, what we're trying to do is work and help investors to do more of what they're doing. And when we tell people, hey, I don't care what you invest in, two rules. Don't lose money and make sure that if you do invest and you do risk your cash, that you keep the lion's share of it. As far as what you invest in, we don't care. We don't eat on that side of the table. And now, because we're sharing some very proprietary information, these are trade secrets, we're going to ask, please don't, no recording, no photography. We'd be happy to, we would be happy to answer any questions you have. Please, no photography, no recording, OK? Now, Nick, you sound really confident when you say that. I'll give you that. But my financial advisor also was, sounded very confident when he was telling me what he thought I should invest in. Yeah, so let's look at that. So, Let's look at who is giving your advice. This is going to shock you. This is absolutely going to blow your mind. Do you guys, are you guys aware that the people that are giving you the advice or the people that you're talking to for doing your trades or figuring out what to invest in, the average financial advisor only makes $79,000 a year. And there's 200 something thousand of them. And out of the total number of investors, excuse me, financial planners out there, are you surprised that when you're talking to that lady or that man to go ahead and give you that advice, they have less than $80,000 to their name invested in anything. And 80, 82, 84% of all financial planners don't even invest in the garbage that they're telling you to invest in. This is a great product. Do you own it? Nope, but you should because I have to pay my mortgage, I have to pay for braces, I have to pay for Maggie's softball, whatever, okay? Most of them have no education at all. They don't own a home. And 87% of you sitting here right now make more money than the people that you're getting advice from what to do with your money. Isn't that amazing? What about, and, what about my CPA? Yeah, and just when you thought that that was bad, wait till you get into your CPA. Now, there's no such thing as, I mean, there's nothing wrong with CPAs. There's something wrong with bad CPAs. And most of them are nothing more than glorified bean counters. The average CPA is worse. They're making $60,000 a year. Now, just to stop beating a dead horse, let's think about this. When investors come to us, they say, look, I need a million dollars to retire. I need multi-millions of dollars to retire. I want to live a certain lifestyle. I want to have a certain retirement. These people have never made a million dollars in their lifetime. They don't know how to make a million dollars. If they don't know how to make a million dollars, how are they going to teach you? I got to step in here, Nick, and I got to defend my CPA because my CPA is my next door neighbor. And you, got, you have to admit that it's smart that I got my CPA close by. I can talk to him over the fence. I can go ask him questions whenever I want. He pays me 400 bucks to do my taxes. I mean, that, you got to admit that's smart, right? Yeah, and there, there are things when you want to be face to face, but it's about getting talent wherever talent is. I was talking to a client here a few weeks ago. Their CPA was their father. And I said, I don't care if it's your father. What does that have to do with anything? Because you know him doesn't mean that he's the best. It means that you know him. He popped you out. So you go, he, he does your taxes and doesn't charge you. You go get talent wherever talent is. Talent is not about an area code. It's not about a zip code. It's not about relatives. It's not about friends. It's about talent. And when you start realizing how to put that together, everybody knows this guy, don't you? Does everybody know who that is? You should. If you're a Philadelphia person, you ought to know who this is. Does anybody know who Nick this Foles, is? Nick Foles, right there. Nick Foles, OK. Yeah, yeah. So question, where did Nick Foles go to school, college? Where did Nick Foles go to college? Arizona, U of A. Where did he get drafted to? That's right, Philadelphia, right? Now, you have Penn State here, Temple here. Pitt here, what the heck was the Philadelphia Eagles, a professional team, a professional team wanting to surround themselves with professionals doing, thinking, going all the way to Tucson, Arizona, just to go find a quarterback? I mean, surely they could have got somebody in their backyard. What were they thinking going all the way to Tucson? Why? Talent, exactly. 
talent. He went to a bunch of teams, and these teams in different places far away from where they were picked them up because they wanted the best talent. Not the best talent in their area code. Not the best talent in their zip code. It doesn't matter when you're talking about your financial plan or your CPA. If you want to feel all warm, fuzzy, and be able to go drive and go see them, talent is talent wherever it is. In fact, I've got a great story that's a personal story about my mom. So here back seven years ago this last May, my mom wasn't feeling well. She had a doctor for 15 years. So by the time we set up an appointment, she got, she got looked at. They ran some tests, and they come back, and they said, oh, you've got a thyroid issue. We're going to go ahead and give you some pills. Okay. So she took the pills. Two weeks later, not only was she feeling bad, she was feeling worse. So I said, Mom, we've got to take you to another doctor. She said, I have a doctor. I said, in all his skill and all his ability and all his talent and all his education, he's not able to find out what's wrong with you. So we went to another doctor. When she got examined, guess what? She had a brain tumor in her head, about the size of a quail egg. Now, let me ask you a question. Would you think that I would ever, in a million years, allow my mother to go back to that original doctor to get help or advice? No, why not? They lost the ability to do business with you. They lost the ability to do business with my mom. Now, here's the thing. Nobody wants to think that the CPA or financial planner or anybody that they've been doing business for 10 or 15 years, oh, it was my dad's CPA, our whole family goes there. Nobody wants to think that they haven't been doing the best job for you, and it's not that they've been trying to stick it to you, and it's not because they've been trying to hurt you. It's because that's their knowledge. That's all they know. Now, knowing that I probably am a good son, and I want the best thing for my mom, don't you think, because I come out of Las Vegas, wouldn't you owe it to your mother to go out there and find the very best brain doctor in all of Nevada? Wouldn't you do that for your mom or dad? Wouldn't you do that? No, you're not listening. <laughs> if the best brain surgeon for my mom was in Australia, we're going to be Austra Australians. If the best brain surgeon for my mom was in Mexico, we're going to be Mexicans. But the best brain surgeon for my mom was in Phoenix, so guess where we went? The same reason a professional team will go wherever to get talent, the same reason we had to travel to go find the best. If you want to go ahead and keep more of your money and you want to start doing things like the wealthy people do, then you go seek talent and chances are the best talent that's available is not in your backyard. Nick, I'm going to give you a smart stamp for that. I think that's a smart stamp. All right. How about some of the lessons that we, we have, we've all learned lessons from the stock market, right? Try to. Yeah. So how many of you have heard, you buy low and you sell what? You buy low and you sell. And then you take the lowest. You sell lot, high, right? And you carry $3,500 for the yeah. next whatever. Except you haven't been selling high, have you? Did your broker call you last week? Where, where was the stock market last week? Had it ever been higher? Did you get a phone call from your broker and he said, hey, it's time to pull, take your chips off the table. It's time to pull your money and we'll, we'll wait until it goes low again. Did you guys get that phone call? Think about this. Buy low and sell high. The, the stock market has never been so high. And not only did you not get that call, you will never get that call to take your chips and run it off the table. Because your broker doesn't make money when your money's not in the stock market. Doesn't make money. Runner. And remember, you're not thinking about 2008. And you say, in 2008, I'm going to be conservative. Houses don't double every six months, right? Houses don't double every six months. The stock market is crazy. I'm going to go take this little company that's been around for 150 years, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stern, 80, 89 and $92 billion company, and I'm going to put my money in bonds because I want to be conservative. I'm going to put my money in cash. And then when they, because they were 22 times over leveraged what the Federal Reserve allowed them to be, because they were something called mortgage-backed securities, they went insolvent. And only because of the bailout did you receive 17 cents, on a doll, 17 cents on the dollar 19 months later. But you would think they would have learned their lesson, except for nobody went to jail and nobody got in trouble. So they said, hey, let's triple down. Let's create something called bespoke securities. That's mortgage-backed securities on steroids, and now let's go ahead and be 30 times over leveraged. That's what's going on right now, and nobody's paying attention to it. But this is a fact. It doesn't matter since 1946. This has happened. 
Good time, bad time, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. And if you think you're going to find safe harbor and putting it in companies, it doesn't do any good if you stick money in one of these companies that isn't going to be there tomorrow. Okay? And everybody goes, oh, that's so crazy that you would say that. Nobody ever thought that 1,311 institutions were going to file bankruptcy in 2008, 2009. Why are we still listening to the financial advisors who are telling us this? Yeah, and so surprised. When you went and started your financial planning, when you decided you were going to go out and what you were going to do, are you so surprised when you walk into Starbucks and they're offering you coffee? When you walk into Burger King and you can buy a hamburger or Subway? And what do you think when you walk into a brokerage that sells stocks, bonds, and mutual funds? What did you think you were going to do? And why did you even do it? Let's go to the next slide. Why did you even, why did you even go into some of these things? Because you got to understand, a lot of people have pieces and they don't have a plan. So let me, let me tell you about my situation, okay? Because uh, I feel like I've done pretty well. I've got money. I've diversified my portfolio. I've got money in the stock market. I've got money in real estate. I've got my own business that I'm investing in. So let me tell you what I've done and you tell me what you think, okay? In fact, tell me if you think it's smart or dumb. Okay. I can, I can take it. All right, so I got money in the stock market, okay? This is probably, people are tired of hearing me tell this story, but in 2014, I invested $10,000 in Amazon. It was just over $300 a share, right? Pretty good. I held on to it until 2018. I pulled out when it was high. Stocks were just over $2,000 a share. $66,000 is what I turned $10,000 into. That's $56,000 profit over four years, right? That's pretty good. I only paid 15% capital gains. That's 8,400 bucks. So I had a 576% interest rate. That's good, right? I think that's fantastic. The only other thing that I would have done is made it so that 576% that you did, same vehicle, same time, same risk, tax-free instead of tax. So I would say that's done. All right. How about my real estate then? All right. So I, I bought a house for $100,000. It's generating rental income for me of $400 a month. I use the house for tax deductions. I get approximately $20,000 in tax deductions, and I'm not paying any any taxes on the earnings because with the 1031 exchange, I can flip the house and go get a new house without paying taxes. I'm deferring my taxes. Same thing. Here's the deal. Great idea. Great investment. Win and got cash flow. That's the most important. The only difference is I want you to keep all of that $400 and not have to pay tax. So I say that's done. Okay. All right. So what's the lesson then? So here we go back to the beginning. Why would you ever invest tax when you invest tax free? And I know what you guys are saying. Then what is the vehicle that does that? Let's get to that. Well, it sounds like what you're talking about is the infinite banking concept. Right. So one of the things that you got to understand, have anybody ever heard of this plan? Nelson Nash, the whole nine yards used to teach for thousands of them. Here's the big difference. The IGIC is the original program before a forest ranger decided to go out there and decided he wasn't making any money. He went and found this in the tax code. Yes, this is in the tax code. And you will be surprised. There is no tricks here. The only way you can get this across the finish line and be able to obtain this program is to have it signed off by Uncle Sam. Now, the IBC versus the IGIC. The For, for, Nick, the, what's an IG, what is IGIC? IGIC have? is investment grade insurance contracts. And what is that? That's where I'm going to take your cash, wherever it is, qualified money, cash and account, whatever, and remember, we didn't want to buy a lot of insurance. Well, we're not. We're going to take the very least amount of insurance to just wrap that cash, to change the status of the money, to recharacterize it, put it into a program that allows you access literally within two days and allows you to invest in anything that you want to, that when you do so and you make a return, the returns come back 100% tax-free. The IBC was created, it's expensive to do, you are buying an insurance policy. Going back, my investors don't want to buy insurance. What they want to do is use insurance as a tool. The investment grade insurance contract was the original plan. It was only created 160 years ago. This is not new. And it was created by Congress who said, we want a vehicle for us. We want a vehicle for us to be able to put massive amount of cash away into a program and have access to it and be able to invest in it while we are and after we leave office. Now, you would think that if they went and created this, that only those people can take advantage of it. But that's not the rule. The rule in the tax code says anything that one person can take advantage of, any other person can take advantage of, so long as they know how to facilitate 
and to create it and bring it to fruition. And that's what we're going to talk about here right now. So, Nick, you know a little bit about my situation. You know, I have some assets here and there. I, I invest in different things. So what do you, what's your recommendation for me? we got to do things as a part of a plan. So many people have investments in different things. I've got stocks. I've got real estate. I've got bonds. I've got whatever. I've got ETFs. That's not a plan. Those are things. What's your exit strategy? Why did you even go into them? Some people will say, oh, well, I thought technology was going to go up. That's why I bought technology stocks. Sure, but how are you going to get out of them? At the end of the day, you're going to have to pay tax. How do you alleviate that tax? How do you eliminate RMDs? How do you deal with all these different things that are going to be effects of the fact that you made money or made good decisions? It's got to come into a plan. And of course, we always like it when we have a plan that comes together. That this is smart. smart, making things a part of a plan, not just having things and having your front end talk to your back end. A lot of people have never set up their estate. They don't know how they're going to pass money on the whole nine yards. Making everything work and talk, that's the most important thing. So Nick, I have a plan. Okay, This is my plan. It's probably similar to a lot of people's plans. I keep my receipts. I, I keep my books clean. At the end of the year, I go to my CPA. I give him my books. I give him my receipts. The CPA goes and finds me deductions, does my tax for me, and then I pay my taxes. When did most people go in there and talk to their uh, tax planner? Okay, so think about it. 2018 passed. When did you actually go and talk to your tax planner? I'm willing to bet February, March of the, of the year after. Because is there anything that anybody can do after the year is over on your tax planning? No. But for 2019, because it's September, there are things that you can do right now. You have to do things in the year that they are happening in order to have them benefit you and not wait to the end, December 31st, it's too late. Remember, all these things are coming down to you, right? You follow your schedules on your returns. It's like playing chess and you only have one square. Well, there's nowhere to move. There's nowhere to move money around. There's nowhere to reposition your investments or your assets. You need to look at it in a grand scheme. We want to play chess. We want to be able to move pieces around and everybody is different. Many of you here are similar, but you're not the same. You have different investments. You have different assets. You have a different idea of retirement, different risks, different returns, different idea of what you think retirement should look like. It has to be tailor-made for you. There is no cookie-cutter approach to this. So let me ask you, Nick, because I kind of get the concept, uh, but can you make it more concrete for me and show me some examples of actual clients and what you've structured for them and let's, how you've done it for let's, them? Let's walk through some people here so you can see an idea. Some of this is going to represent people that are sitting in the audience. How many people out here do real estate? Anybody do real estate? Love real estate. Real estate's the big boy playground of deductions. But what's better than having to worry about deductions is making non-taxable events. That's the difference between the wealthy and the average Joe. Wealthy people create non-taxable events. Here's a lady, she's out in Florida. She, uh, I think if I remember right, she was an insurance adjuster. She doesn't want to be an adjuster anymore. She's got about $300,000 in her 401k. She's going to leave, okay? IRA, 401k, 403b, 457, 411i, defined benefit, defined contribution plan. So any it qualified matter. account? Any qualified account, you can roll this over. Cash in account, stock portfolios, it doesn't matter. So we're going to roll this out, and we're going to set up this program. She now wants to go and invest. How does she do it so that she can eliminate her tax liability, keep the lion's share of returns, and make it happen? Here's what you've been waiting for, the program. She's got now $300,000 in a broker account. Her broker is never going to let her put her money into a place where they don't get paid a commission. So in order to facilitate this program, we've got to create a structured account which allows the money to move over like kind. Assets in kind transfer from a qualified account to a structured account, no taxable event, no fines, no penalties, no anything. Now what we need to do is we're going to go to the IRS and we're going to say, okay, here's the deal. Gloria doesn't want to be with Charles Schwab. She doesn't want to be with Fidelity. She wants to create her own fund. So we're going to create an LLC as, have you ever heard of a home office or a family fund or anything like that? She's going to govern her own investments. Special entity, special operating agreement, special subscription agreement, all her internal governances and compliance and everything that she would need to do, just like you would set up a fund for these people that you're talking to out here. And then Uncle Sam says, hey, Gloria, you got to capitalize this thing. you got to have money in here if you want to invest with it. So the IRS signs off on it? So the IRS signs off on it and says, hey, 
300,000 shares at a dollar, okay? Par value of a dollar, $300,000. I'm going to buy 300,000 shares at a dollar, and now all this money is going into her entity. Now the money is sitting into this company, into her fund. Look around. If something were to happen to Gloria, she walks across the street, she gets hit by a car, she gets turned into a grease spot. There's nobody to run this fund. So the entity gets together and says, we need to insure Gloria. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up this investment grade insurance contract. Okay? When we go ahead and do this, she says, look, I want to put a piece of this in here to go to work, to start it out into my program. I'm going to put $125,000 in there. Now, the reason I did that is because here you have a contracted rate. This is the difference between what you're doing and what you can be doing. Number one, the money goes in there and has a guaranteed return. You cannot lose your principal. So the programs right now are paying about 4.5%, but for the sake of math, we're showing at 4%. Now, it can do up to 14 to 16%. And here's the kicker. It is opposite of what's going on in the market. If the market tanks, fantastic for you. If inflation goes up, fantastic for you. It is opposite of all those things. When Jimmy Carter was president and was going crazy and spending all the money and inflation was radical, they, people were making 14 and 16%. The money goes in there. She's got a buck and a quarter. She wants to put it to work. So on 125000 at 4%, she's making $5,000 on the interest. Now, here's another great thing. When she takes that money out and invests it, even though the money has left the program, she keeps getting paid on it as if it never left. She still earns that interest rate as if it never left. How? Because this is an insurance policy. This is an insurance contract. This is her contracted rate. She gets paid. They say, hey, you lose the money, you make money, it goes away, that's on you. We're going to pay you this rate of return based on the fact that you put this money to work. But that 4%, that's just icing on the cake, right? That's not where the real growth occurs. Right. The real growth is now that she's earning that money, she wants to make an additional return. So she's going to go out there and get herself a piece of real estate. Now, the money is being traded inside of the contract. And because it's inside of the contract, she can't take that money out. So she goes to the insurance company and she borrows from the general fund. And this is what it looks like. She takes the money from the general fund. She takes her $100,000 and she wants to buy a piece of property. So remember, she's got $125,000 in there and she wants to take $100,000 to buy a piece of property. So do the math. $125,000 times 4%, she's earning $5,000 on her money. She takes her money out, she's going to borrow at 4.76%. So she's earning $5,000 on $125,000. She's paying $4,760 on $100,000. $5,000 minus $4,760 is $240. So even though she borrowed her own money out, she's still earning on it. I get it. It's not anything sexy. But what is, is what comes next. She's now going to invest in that piece of property. $70,000 to buy it. 30000 to fix it up. And understand, we're just doing a model here so you can see how it worked for the sake of math. Now, a year goes by, she decides to sell it, and she sells it for $120,000. Here's the deal. The investment grade insurance contract is the vehicle. It's not the investment. If you go buy a stock and sell that stock, or I sell it, we're going to pay longer short-term capital gains. If you were a business buyer, sell that property. You, you go ahead and sell that property, you're going to pay longer short-term capital gains. What about day trading, futures? Day trade, stocks, bonds, ETFs, it doesn't matter. Oil and gas, futures, it does not matter. The difference is when you stick that money into the IGIC and you act as the fiduciary on behalf of the insurance contract, anything you invest in and the returns from anything you invest into, those returns come back 100% tax-free. Why? The same way that the... IRS has said you pay your tax, you put your money into a Roth, and when you invest with a Roth, it comes back tax-free. And the, and the Congress and government could not qualify for that plan. They made too much money. So they said, we make the rules, we decide how they're governed, we create them, we're going to create this program to put unlimited amount of cash into a program and allow us to invest in anything we want. It has been nicknamed the rich man Roth. This is the vehicle under Section 7702 of the Internal Revenue Code. Anything that's invested through an insurance contract, the returns come back 100% tax-free. So there's something you said. I want to make sure I heard it right. There's no annual contribution limit to what you can put in here? Absolutely. No limits. 
You don't have to wait till you're 59 and a half to go do it. There's no prohibited transactions. It's your money. You want to get it. It's literally liquid two days. It has to clear the account and it's available. At the end, we're going to hit a summary on it, but this is the smart way to invest. Imagine you were buying pieces of property. This is what it would look like for you. Even a little bit of a return because you get to keep all of it. That's yours. Here, if you look here on the bottom here, it doesn't matter if it's 15% or 54%, that's all yours. You don't have to worry on your RMDs. RMDs are arrested. Now, when she takes that $300,000 and she rolls it in, all the growth on that money is 100% tax-free. So she's got a million dollars, okay? She goes and she wants to live on it. You would normally have to liquidate your RMDs to go ahead and liquidate out of your account, excuse me, to pay your RMDs, okay? Take $50,000 out there, pay $20,000 in tax, live on the other $30,000. You have to liquidate your positions in your stock, get rid of that property you wanted to pass on to your family. My investors don't want to do that. So what happens is in this vehicle, they don't have to do that. Why? Because they're earning, say, 4.5% on a million dollars, and they're going to have to take their RMDs 3.8% on $300,000. So the interest that they make on the whole pays the tax that they owe on the part. So now they don't have to liquidate their assets. They can keep their money in their position, and because of that, their retirement lasts longer because it's not being eaten up by required minimum distributions. Now, here's another guy. Anybody out here have a business that's not investing? That's any, any kind of blue-collar business out there. Anybody have a business out there? Okay, anything. All right, so how do you take a piece of your business and segregate it? How do you take a piece of your business, right? Wouldn't that be great if you could take a piece of your business, take it off the ta table and make it tax-free? Here's a situation where Han goes out there and what he, oh, sorry, I, I forgot. We skipped this. <laughs> I'm gonna talk, I forgot who Han was. I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. Han goes out there, he's got $107,000 in, in Facebook, Facebook stock. stock, okay? Now, Zuckerberg is getting ready to go up before Congress. We set up his plan. He liquidates his stock portfolio only after the plan is set up and it moves into the program. Now that it hits the program, what he does is he lets it clear and goes right back and buys his position. Now what happened during that time is his $107,000 position dropped to $93,000 because the stock went down. So now he goes and buys his same position, actually owns more stock. What's the difference? What's the difference now but that wasn't the same before? When he goes and sells his stock now, it's not owned by him. It's not subject to long or short-term capital gains. It's owned by the insurance contract. So he has the same amount of stock, even more, but when he sells it and it goes 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars a share, he doesn't have to pay any money in taxes. That's why this is a smart plan. A lot of you guys have portfolios you can liquidate them, move it in, and as long as within a certain amount of time frame you go back and buy your same positions, there's no taxable event. The biggest difference, though, is that now forever moving forward, your returns will always be tax-free. So it's virtually no risk. Oh, I don't know why I did that, but there's virtually no risk. Guaranteed interest. You do not have that in a 401k. You do not have that in the stock market. The stock market goes bad, you will lose your whole money. I'm not even gonna say anything. There's no penalties, okay? It's liquid, it's available to you. You wanna to try to get your money out of your qualified account? Good luck, go get it. You can't do it. It's creditor protected, asset protection. Even the IRS cannot attach to this vehicle. There's no or low RMDs. You can carve out your employees. If you have partners, or if you're a doctor or an engineer, and you have partners, or if you're just in a business, and you don't want to include all your employees, you don't have to. You can carve this out just for you, and you don't have to participate in your other people. There's no contribution limits. It's tax-free. You can use it as collateral, so you can actually use the investment for what it is, or you can use it to get lines of credit against and collateralize it for other investments. Baked inside it is disability benefits. Long-term care, 70% of all Americans will need long-term care, less than 10% have it. And right now, the cost of long-term care is about $9,200, $9,300 a month. Well, that's today. In 20, 25 years from now, it's not $10,000, it's $25,000 a month. Oh, but you're married, so it's $50,000 a month. 
and you have a million dollars saved that has the buying potential of half a million dollars, and you're spending $50,000 a month on long-term care, you know what that means? You're literally begging to die in 10 months. That's <laughs> no way to live. The reason why people don't go into long-term care, it's expensive. But what if you can have a plan that does all of this, and without having to pay for it, baked in is your long-term care. If you need it, you can use it. They will allow you to take 24% of your death benefit up to $20,000 a month and use it to pay for your long-term care. Disability, chronic, anything that you need under that. Tax-free transfers to heirs, this money, it's the only investment. Where can you put up a quarter and pass on a dollar to your loved ones? You have an IRA, okay? I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Client's got an IRA, has $1.218 million in an IRA. I talked to him 18 months prior to this about doing the program. Prior to what? Prior to his wife calling me because he had passed away. Ironically, he ran five miles a day for five days a week. He was 51 years old. So the spouse thinks she's getting $1.218 million. Guess what? Nope. Because now she has to take all her money, all the RMDs, all at once as if he was alive. Okay? So now she's got roughly about $800 some odd thousand dollars. Now you think she's going to get $800,000. No, because now that all that money drops down on her 1040, she pays 39.6% plus an additional 7% because she's out of Colorado in her federal and state income tax. Out of $1.218 million, she's going to end up with $446,000. If he would have listened to us, that $1.218 million would have produced a $5.6 million death benefit that when he died, she would have got close to $6 million, 100% tax-free. So that is the smart way to go about it. And if I understand, the IRS, the SEC, and the insurance commissioner all sign off on this. Yeah, you're not going to trick anybody to do this program. The only way that you can do this program is specific to you. What is the amount of money you're putting in? Where is it coming from? How old are you? What kind of money do you make? And because I understand what you're going to say, it's an insurance product, you'll say, well, I'm not healthy or I'm too old. I can't qualify. Three pieces to the puzzle. You've got the owner of the policy, the beneficiary of the policy, and the insured. If you're insured and you're old and you're unhealthy and you can't get insurance, you can always insure somebody else. You can insure your, your, your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, a friend, a neighbor, anybody. You can insure somebody else. So that's a good benefit. So let me get this straight then, Nick. I've listened to your presentation. I want to make sure I understand. What you're telling me is I don't need a CPA because you're one of the best tax firms in the country. And they're not going to know how to file this return. The most important thing is when this thing goes out, you've told the IRS what you're doing. They've allowed it to, now they want to see it, and they have to know specific. This is a specific product that has to be handled by somebody that perfectively understands how to deal with the code and what to file properly. And I don't need my financial planner because your business is a fiduciary and is actually going to put me in a product that is best for me as opposed to something that earns big commissions. We don't pick programs that people go into. We do not work for a company. We work for the client. So whatever it is that you want to do out there, we could care less. Remember, keep the money, save the most in taxes, two rules, stay with that. It's the best thing I can tell you. And I don't need my estate planner because you guys can do trusts in all 50 states. And you want to be able to have your front end talk to your back end so that you can, a part of your estate exclusions, pass this on 100% tax free and make it, make it pass on. And I don't need my insurance agent because even if they wanted to, this isn't something they could do. They can't do it. Not only that, they wouldn't do it if they could because this doesn't pay any kind of commissions that they would want to receive for the amount of work that goes into it. Well, that sounds smart. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sure thing. All right. I already have stock. I've already invested it. It's, it's in the broker's account. Is it too late for me to do this plan with that stock? No. We have to, I guess, unring the bell a little bit and be able to reallocate it to do it a different way, but it's not too late. You want to take, and what we spend the most of our time is dealing with people that have portfolios and allowing them, allowing them to recharacterize that money so that they can invest moving forward tax-free. What if I have a 401k or some other qualified plan? I've already told the government, hey, I'm, or I've already taken my tax deduction. It's in there. I've agreed to do the RMD thing. Is it too late for me? Absolutely. This is what it was built for. If you have a qualified count, IRA, SEP, SARSEP, Simple, KEO, 403B, 411I, 401K, any of the number lettered accounts, 
You guys probably never learned that that's an annuity for the government, but you can get out of that, especially even if you have an employer and you're working in a 401k with your employer, as long as they have an in-service transfer, you can roll out of that. This program was built for that, to roll it out and put it into a way that you can recharacterize it. Now, there is one caveat, Zach. You can only do this one time. You have four different accounts. You can only capitalize that entity one time. So if you're going to do it, you got a million dollar spread, 250,000 in four accounts, and you decide to only roll in one, you're burnt on the other three. You have to do it. If you have a spouse and you guys want to both come into the program, the rule is you both have to come in at the same time. What if I don't have a qualified account with a bunch of money in it? I don't have a whole lot of money. I make a few hundred dollars extra a month that I have. That's perfect. It's, it's slow and steady wins the race. If you don't have a qualified account, if you just have cash in an account, CD or a money market, or at the end of the day, at the end of the month, you have a few hundred dollars left over after your cash flow and you pay all your bills, you take your bride out, you take your spouse out, you go get that steak dinner, you watch that movie, you go entertain each other, and there's a few bucks left over, you can absolutely do this. This is not for just the wealthy people or people with high qualified accounts. It's built for anybody, and we can create that program. There's no wrong answer. Every single program is built specifically for you as an individual. Well, I've been talking to some of these booth exhibitors, and there are a few I want to invest in. Right? There's the water reclamation stuff. But there's, there's all sorts of stuff, right? But I've got to jump on it. How quickly can we get this done this so will, I can do it tax-free? Great question. This will take mm -hmm. us about 30 to 40 days. And remember, 30 to 40 days from today is a lot sooner than 30 to 40 days from tomorrow. If you do have an investment and you need to jump on it, and it might happen in a shorter window, you got to let us know. If possible, we can pull our juice card and punch things through, but we will be able to make it so you can take advantage of it. All right, one last question. Let's say I have a qualified account. I want to do what Gloria did, and I want to recharacterize that qualified money to free it up so I can use it. How much does that cost? Yep, so remember how we talked about it. We make it affordable for everybody. So in this, and only for you at the money show, this is not what we would normally charge, but if we get a sheet from you today, we will make it so that all you have to do is pay the cost. The cost to set up the entities to move it over, the cost to do the compliance, the IRS sign-offs, the SEC sign-offs, the insurance underwriting, the whole program, put it together, create, create all the underwriting requirements, and then go ahead and walk you through, teach you how to use it, help you with a few different transactions so you can learn. You have to pay the cost, and that comes out to... 2860. Well, that sounds smart. So, I want to do it. What do I do? This is the key. You guys all have a gold sheet in there. Okay? That's what you want to fill out. Also, if you look back here, you'll see two girls standing by our sign. They will not only have um, a, a form if you didn't get one, they will also have our calendars. If you would like to do something, you walk back there, you go ahead and fill that thing out. We will call you. If there is something that is Short-lived, for example, if you have something pertinent going on right now and it's a matter of a time frame, let us know. If you have comments on there or things that you're interested in, fill that out to the best of your ability and we will contact you within the next couple weeks. If you're looking to do something, this will last, this special will last for the next 30 days. If you can't decide that you don't want to pay taxes, you aren't a client for us. You're a masochist, okay? <laughs> so. If you're going to save taxes, when do you want to stop paying taxes? Today. That's when you need to act. What about the people who aren't in the room that this is being broadcast to? If you're broadcasting and you're watching this, thank you for watching. There's our phone number. There's our email. Please feel free to bombard Zach. He would love it. Uh, contact him. Tell him you're interested. We'll shoot you a form or we have an e-form and you can fill that out and get it to us. If you're here, we are going to get busy. Now it's the end of the year. You will need to do things before the end of the year. This is our busiest time of year. People are moving money around and trying to do different things. So if you fill this out, we will have a meeting with you within the next couple, three weeks. We will make sure that we can speak with you. And if it's something that you want to do, we will have it so that we can facilitate it in time. So be smart. Don't be dumb. Be smart, don't be dumb. I hope you guys learned something. I think we got to get off stage, but we'll hang around. If you have some specific questions and you don't feel about talking about it in front of everybody, then we'll be happy. But we thank you guys. I hope you guys learned something. And remember, guys, this, I think this is honestly the last great financial program 
that we have left available that nobody has altered or changed and probably never will be because the largest lobby in the world, most people don't know, 65 to 68 percent of the national debt is owned by, not China, it's the insurance companies. Bailing out World War II, 01, 08, the dot-com era has always been because insurance companies are very conservative, they're very slow moving, and they don't over leverage versus a bank or a financial institution leveraging at 10 to 1 or 20 to 1, they will lend out at 1 to 1. That's why they're not going anywhere. And a few years back, in the last days of Obama's administration, they wanted to eliminate this program. So the insurance commission said, hey, you want to regulate us? Cut us a check for $17 trillion, and you can tell us what to do. And he said, well, we don't have $17 million. Trillion. Trillion dollars. So he said, okay, then shut up and go away. <laughs> and they did. So anyways, we're thankful that you're here. We hope that you learned something while hang around for any questions you might have. Thank you very much for coming.